welcome back to another vlog thank you so much for tuning in of course y'all already know i'm so excited for y'all to be here and if you're new here i wanted to say hi thank you for stopping by so today i'm super duper 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 excited because this is my first tutorial today we're gonna do a half up half down and it's going to be in depth. I'm going to be able to tell you guys a little pro, a couple of pro tips and everything, y'all. So make sure y'all stay tuned throughout the whole video. So boom, what I was doing at the beginning of the video was going ahead and parting my client's hair in half from ear to ear in like the circular type of shape. Not straight across, but from ear all the way over to the other ear and so she's just gonna get like the regular half up half down what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna start my first braid which is going to go from the top where that first ponytail is and it's gonna wrap all the way around into the back of her hair so this braid you want to make sure is very very tiny because this braid is going to be that seamless braid that's going to help you not have to leave out any hair so i will explain more in depth when i begin to sew what this braid actually does but you want to make sure that it's tight and super small and then once i get done with that braid i'm gonna take another piece and part it from where i started the other braid and wrap that one all the way around to meet the bottom braid you can see right there exactly where i'm stopping it so I'm going around the whole bottom of the head and I'm stopping at the other side. And then from there, you'll see where that other braid will connect. And then you'll just braid it into one braid. this is where the other side of your first braids are going to connect so as you've seen i took the other side and i braided it from the top all the way down to the bottom and connected it with that other braid that started from the other side wrapped around the bottom and now they're connected now that you have your perimeter braid we're going to just part straight down and make some braids going down um the method that i use is i would braid and then separate it as you can see pull up the bottom braid or the braid that's on the other side of it pull it up into that braid and braid it down that'll give you the most seamless braid in the back pro tip if the hair is longer I would recommend pulling up that braid on the side of it a lot earlier. That way it'll be very flat and you don't have to worry about bulkiness. So for this particular half up half down, I'm going to be sewing her hair in in the back. So of course I'm going to make my braids in the back a little bit smaller so that when I lay the tracks they will lay seamless. But you just continue this step all the way across. Some kinds might have more hair so you'll break make the braids smaller and um, if they have you know thinner hair then you can pretty much stretch these braids out you won't have that many braids but make sure to continue to bring up the braid that's on the other side of it into the braid that you're braiding and make it flat girl
Now, all my clients love a good oil down. Make sure that you're oiling your client's hair. Guys, I have literally got so many people tell me that their hair is growing because of this step. Don't forget this step. Now, don't get me wrong. Sometimes I run out of oil and some people may not get it, but I promise you, everybody loves that step. So make sure you got your oil. From here, I'm gonna go ahead and hot comb. Y'all, I use my stove hot comb. Don't mind the rag. Every single time I buy a hot comb, y'all, the bottom part, the wooden part, burns. But I need stove top um, hot combs only because they get so hot. So, of course, like Granny would do back in the day, you have to blow that hot comb. Blow that hair while you're running that hot comb through there. Or I promise that he is going to eat your client up. I'm just going around like I did. I started from the back to make sure that super straight went to the sides and really um, flat iron, I mean, hot comb those edges really, really good because this is going to help you with their next step. To make it even more straight and more easier once we get to putting that part in the ponytail, I just go through and hit it with a quick hot, um, no, I hit it with a quick um, flat iron. <laughs> I hit it with a quick flat iron. Y'all, I love my baby list flat irons. I've had them. If I break them, Lord forbid, I don't even want to say this, not going wood, Lord, don't let it happen, but I'm going to stop whatever I'm doing to go purchase me some more babyless flat irons if they break like no and I literally have a story time about my flat irons from when I traveled and went home to do hair y'all my babyless flat irons broke in the middle of me doing hair please believe I was at Ulta an hour later purchasing me some more and they pretty pricey but they work so good but stay focused Okay, we're gonna comb all of this hair up into the place where we're gonna place the ponytail or where we want the ponytail. So I don't go in and put a ponytail in, I just clip it. I clip it, I use one or two clips, however many, you know, depends on her hair texture and how thick it is. I'll put the pin in there and then I'll go to pull out the edges so I know exactly, you know, where I want them to go before I start curling and before I start spraying anything. She was looking for um, more of a, like she wanted some extra baby hairs, but when your client is asking for something, you give them that, but you also want to make sure that it fits their face. You don't want a bunch of edges on a small forehead, you know? So you got to be the pro and figure out what will look best on the client. Trust me, they'll thank you. Now that I have my edges, I'm gonna go ahead and use the curling technique to curl my edges. This is gonna make it way easier when you go in and make the swoops. A lot of people have a hard time swooping and honestly, I knew how to swoop before this method, but this definitely made it a lot easier and faster. So I found that giving my client the blow dryer when I do baby hairs is going to be the fastest way because I use Gots to Be Spray for my baby hairs now. Um, I definitely suggest that you choose, uh, change your method into a spray based edge, like edge control because edge control, what I didn't like is the greasiness of it. I didn't like how it looks very greasy and so this will give you sleek slick and they will stay in place a lot longer so here i'm just doing her edges 
and I use my finger to help me hold the swoop so once I swoop it I will probably like put my finger there just to hold the top of the swoop the curvature of it and then I'll go ahead and finish with my little either brushing it into the hair or my little swirl at the bottom So here's a pro tip. I'm gonna do this swirl at the top of her head. And an easy way to do that to me is once you curl your edges, what you wanna do is spray it with some got to be. And because you curled that edge, once you comb that piece, it'll literally wrap right around your finger and then you can literally just place it on the head and it'll be a perfect little circle and you'll just blow dry it. Simply how I did it right there. This is super trendy. This is something that you can add to extra baby hairs if a client asks for that or just a little va va boom if you want to. I love it. It's so cute. So here I'm just doing the other side. Gonna do the exact same steps for the baby hairs over here. I'm just fixing up my swirls and making sure that all the baby hair is going into the ponytail at a curve. I like for my baby hairs to go into my ponytail, like curved into my ponytail. Okay, boom. So now we're getting into the actual ponytail. What I'm doing here is I'm going to make my first ponytail. I'm going to make sure I take a small comb and really comb through everything to make sure it's flat in the way I want it. This first ponytail is not going to be the ponytail that we actually use, but this is going to be the ponytail that I use to make sure that I am spraying and moving everything, swooping everything the way I want it to be to avoid cracks and bumps. This is going to give you the effect of a really tight and sleek ponytail. This part is going to be pretty tedious, so you want to make sure that you take your time and spray um, piece by piece, meaning like you'll take one part like I'm doing right here, you'll spray it, you'll comb it up, you'll blow dry it. Spray it, comb it up, blow dry it, and you'll move all around the front of the head until you get your desired sleekness. As you can see, I'm kind of holding my hand there after I um, comb it up because to me, it just helps it like stretch it out and keep that pulled effect. So once you spray it and you comb it, once you comb it up, you want to keep your finger there to keep that pulled effect like it keeps it held, held there. And then y'all, excuse my kitchen. Wow. I did not hot comb the back of my hair that day. It was just not one of those days where I cared about the back of my hair. <laughs> so just excuse it and stay focused. <laughs> I'm 
All right, so here, as you can tell, I'm about to go ahead and put my actual ponytail in there. As you can see, when I took the other ponytail holder off, the hair was stuck in place. That is exactly how you want it because now when it's time to put that good ponytail in there, it's easier to grip that hair. Look how easy that was and slick. I hate trying to get like the perfect ponytail without doing that step because it, it just, it never, it never just does it for me. But right here, I'm just doing some little touch ups, you know, any little cracks or anything that you still might get, you can still just brush it up and it's an easy fix. Here I'm just taking the ponytail and braiding it down. This is going to be the foundation of the ponytail. I'm also going to take a black strip and wrap it around the braid. So as I'm taking my black strip and wrapping it around the ponytail, I'm going to wrap it from the top of the ponytail all the way down to the bottom where the head is. And then to seal this um, black wrap, I use glue. Just put it at the end and I wrap it around and I usually blow dry it. I'm not sure if I did it right here, but that'll just keep everything in place. So now I'm gonna begin to sew my tracks. And as you can see, I molded my ponytail before starting with the tracks. And that is because I want to make sure that my first track is gonna be started above the ear. And then once I start that track, I'm gonna go around the bottom of her head. And then I'm going to end that track before I do the flip over at the other side of the top of her ear. Remember, this is gonna be no leave out. So the reason why you wanna go in that circular motion, the C shape in the back, is because the tracks will eventually begin to fall over each other and fall towards the front. That will prevent that leave out portion. Um, I'll just let the video play so you can see how I'm sewing back and forth in a C shape from one ear to the other. And then once we get to the top, I'll explain that. Let me tell you one thing about coming to get your hair done with me. We're definitely going to watch a good old movie or a good old series. We was watching something off the BT Plus and I should be... I should be sponsored by BET Plus the way I put my clients on all the movies and all the TV shows. If you don't have BET Plus, y'all need to tune in because it is some good stuff on there. But stay focused. <laughs> Here you can see me beginning to flip my track and you'll see exactly where I ended it. As you can see, I'm going within that C shape and I'm going to stop right there where the other track is. I'm actually doing it slightly under where I started the first track, but as the video goes on, you'll see how I build up on top of that first track in that same C motion. And also drop a comment below if you like a tutorial on how I flip my tracks to make sure that all of my sewing from half up, half downs to regular sewings are super flat. So now I'm starting on my second pack of hair. For half up, half down, I usually do about three bundles. This is going to be um, two packs of hair. I think I still did three. Yeah, three packs of hair from the hair store as well. So my recommendation for any half up, half down is definitely going to be three bundles. Two, bun two packs of hair or three packs of hair. It just depends because you know sometimes when you go to the hair store, two packs of hair is equivalent to three bundles. But for this specific one, it was curly hair and I believe this is synthetic as well, so we use three packs.
love me like family too. But I got needs on. Okay, so here we're going to end the track. So I just wanted to give you a little pro tip. So what you just seen me do was when I stuck the needle through the track and the braid, before I put the needle all the way through, I took my thread and I wrapped it around the needle about three times and then I pulled it. That is going to make sure that you don't have any track slipping. We're going to keep that track right in place. And then let's take a moment from this angle and appreciate how flat this sewing is. That is why it's so important to do that C shape because it's gonna lay so good without even have to have any leave out. And that flip over method, y'all need that. So, so make sure you're dropping in the comments. We wanna see your flip over method for your sew-ins. all right sis so we made it to the top of the head so you know how i've been saying this whole time that we're gonna do the c shape all the way around the back of the head so there's going to be a time where you literally can't even do a c anymore which is going to be at the tippy top of your head basically where i'm at then from there you're really just going to take the tracks straight across it'll probably be a give or take two to three tracks right there usually it's about two because you can go the c way all the way until you need about one or two tracks at the top in this angle you can definitely see what i mean by the tracks laying on top of each other so you don't see any braid you don't see no extra hair on the side you see straight slick ponytail and tracks that's exactly how you want it so basically here what i'm doing is sealing off this sewing in the back Okay, since we've made it through the whole sewing process, what I'm gonna do is start on the ponytail. So what I'm doing right here is I'm just taking some of that glue at the end of the uh, track, and then I'm gonna wrap it around the bottom of the ponytail. The length of the ponytail or the length of the braid down that you're gonna do for that ponytail depends on if your client wants a longer ponytail or a shorter ponytail. For this specific one, I left a little tail at the end of the ponytail to give it just that extra length to match the bundles in the back. Um, also, when I start that first track, when I glue it, I go ahead and I pretty much like lock that first track in or I lock that first piece in with the blow dryer. And then from there, honestly, I just put the um, glue onto the tissue, the black strip, and then I take the tracks and I wrap them around. I feel that that is the easiest, less messy way because I hate glue. Glue will get all over my hand if I try to put the glue on the tracks. So basically, like I said, I just put the glue on the black strip. I wrap the track around and I blow dry every two to three wraps to make sure that that ponytail is secure. And honestly, that's all you do with the ponytail and the wrapping process until you get to the bottom.
Now that we've wrapped the ponytail down to its base and below dried that last track to seal that ponytail, we're gonna pull out some hair from the bottom back. I like the bottom back because it helps you get that perfect wrap. Start it from the back where you can't see like where the hair is gonna be pulled from. So you take it from the bottom back and you wanna comb it out. Usually what I would do is flat iron that piece, whether it's curly hair or not, I will flat iron that piece. But for this particular case, I can't because it's synthetic hair. So what I'm doing here is I'm just taking the comb and I'm combing out the curls and then I'm just gonna go wrap it like regular. A pro tip for me to you guys is definitely to spread that hair out so that you can get a nice wrap. I personally don't like the little skinny wrap around the bottom of the ponytail. I like something thicker. Also, it helps stand the ponytail up for the higher ponytails, and that's usually what I go for. And that's actually what you see me doing here right now. It's like, you know how you put a regular ponytail in your hair and you pull the base? I pulled the base of this ponytail to make it sit up a little bit higher for me. Y'all, I totally forgot to tell you how to secure your wrap. So when wrapping the bottom of your ponytail, once you get to the like last inch of the wrap, I would take some glue and I'll put, place like a little bit of glue in the back of the ponytail where it's wrapped at. And then I, once you wrap it around that little piece, the end of it, the last little inch will go into the glue. You'll spray some to be, and then you'll just blow dry it and it'll keep that wrap secured and not unraveling while your client has the style in, your, in their head. I'm sorry y'all, I forgot to record that part. We have pretty much finished this whole install. What I'm doing right now is teasing the top of the ponytail. This is what I like to do with curly hair because it helps me get a higher fuller ponytail. And these are the results. If you like this tutorial, make sure you comment below and hit the like button. Follow us on Instagram at underscore house of lavish. See you next time. Mwah.